Before the main content, a small innovation, while well, I will have only one filament in the video, it will be compared with so-called reference material, which is a very big average for 150 tested filaments. And I will not change this number in the future, but more about it later in a separate video. Now let's continue. Welcome to my tech farm. Polymaker gave me a huge homework because they sent me all fiber on filaments. Well, actually one is missing, that's the carbon fiber reinforced PSX. I have here three nylon filaments, PS6, PA12, PS612, and they will be compared in one separate video. Then I have two PTG filaments, and they are also subjects for another separate video. And then I have PPS, reinforced with carbon fibers, and it will be tested after I finish the review of the KD Plus 4, because this filament requires temperatures above 300 degrees Celsius. And for this video, I have the PET CF17, PET reinforced with carbon fibers. And in this video, I will do my regular testing methods, so the results are comparable with those which I did in earlier videos. Now, later in a separate video, I will have a comparison of four different PET brands, because uh, slowly this PET reinforced with carbon fibers became my favorite filament type when I need some uh, stronger, stiffer mechanical part. Earlier it was the polycarbonate reinforced with carbon fibers, but uh, these PET CF filaments are stronger, they have better mechanical properties, better temperature resistance, and I want to find out which one is the best. Now let's talk more about this PET CF17. The 17 is the percentage of the carbon fibers in this material, and it has great uh, stiffness, this means it resists good to the bending. It is not sensitive to moisture, according to the website. I believe they compare it mostly with the nylon here. Uh, I think it has a similar sensitivity like PETG, but I'm not 100% sure about this. It has great dimensional accuracy, which is typical for this carbon fiber reinforced materials. The runs are between 270 and 300 degrees Celsius. I will start with the temperature tower, but if everything will be okay, then I will print my test objects on 300 degrees Celsius, like with the other two PET filaments. About the enclosure and chamber temperature. Now, it is recommended, but theoretically it is printable on open printer too, but in this case, uh, because of that faster cooling, we will have weaker layer adhesion. How weaker, I don't really measure it, I just did some small tests and I just uh, snap it with my fingers. Now let's talk about the annealing. On their website, they recommend to anneal the test objects to improve mechanical properties, and they suggest 100 degrees Celsius for 10 hours, which is quite long time. And I know for my test object, uh, two hours will be enough, because don't forget, they must recommend the settings which are enough for any printed objects, even this big. Because um, what is uh, the annealing? It is exposing the material to temperatures which is uh, higher than the glass transition temperature, which is in this case 79.3 degrees Celsius according to their data sheet. And for my small parts, uh, two hours are far enough, even the center of the test object will be exposed to this temperature. And after this, uh, it, they must cool down together with the oven. Now, in my experience, the annealing with the PET uh, improves significantly the temperature resistance. The mechanical properties are improved, but not much and sometimes the layer adhesion will be even weaker and the reason for this is actually that if we have some even micro warping in that case uh, we have some delamination and uh, you know the layer adhesion is weak like the weakest uh, link in the chain and uh, this sometimes results uh, weaker layer adhesion so if i don't need high temperature resistance i don't really like to do the annealing of the pet test objects let's see what's in the box this packaging is really good, it protects better the material from the moisture and this bag is properly resealable. Ah, oh, it's not resealable. Okay. And I think this bag is resealable but on a smaller side, so be careful, don't cut it here, but above this ceiling line. End of the filament is glue, so I believe that it is quite brittle, but let's see that. Yes, as expected. Nice carbon spool with all important information on it. Uh, for example, we know that the empty spool weight is 175 grams. Only thing I am missing here is what is the maximum temperature for the spool itself, for the drying. It will be in the filament dry a few hours, but only on 70 degrees Celsius, because this is the maximum for this unit. Printing will be on X1 carbon, and I'm using the engineering plate with some glue on it. The temperature tower will be from 300 degrees Celsius down to 270. It is hard to see on the black color, but the printing looks okay so far. This is the second element on 290 degrees Celsius. 
the overhang looks nice on any element. The bridging not really don't like these higher temperatures with minimal part cooling, but uh, anyway with my test objects only on one I have the bridging. And I will enable support and I will print everything on 300 degrees Celsius. In Slicer I selected the Bamble PET CF filament and only thing I changed here is the nozzle temperature to 300 degrees Celsius, all other values I left as a default. The printing is at 50% and it looks completely ok so far. And last few vertical test objects. Hmm, they look really nice. I forgot that I need some additional test objects for the annealing, so I'm printing them now. These test objects will be annealed. And size this unit is very inaccurate prototype. I will supervise the temperature with this cooking thermometer and my goal is between 90 and 100 degrees Celsius. As predicted, if I set the temperature to 84 degrees Celsius, it will be 95 inside and it reached this temperature in 11 minutes. I let them cool down together with the machine. Visually there are no signs of the deformation. Just in case I mark them with letter A and only one dimension I want to check and this should be 80 millimeters and I'm measuring above the elephant foot. 79, 86 millimeters. And this is the reference material which was not annealed. 79.95. So these parts are really accurate before the annealing. After annealing they have some shrinkage but this is completely acceptable. And what is more important that there is no deformation on these objects. Objects are ready and I can start the mechanical testing. And I'm starting with a tensile test. This is PET CF. Objects are printed in horizontal position. And now let's see the annealed version. And basically no difference between two. And this is the layer adhesion. This is good layer adhesion. And let's see the annealed version, if it will be weaker. And it's even better. The hook test, side by side. Regular version, slightly better. And the shear test, uh, with horizontal and vertically printed test objects. Here I don't have the annealed version. Let's see the partial results. On the test side test, uh, no big difference between these two material and they are also very similar to that uh, reference material I mentioned earlier. On the layer adhesion test, uh, interesting the annealed version is this time slightly better, usually the annealed versions are weaker, but in both cases this is good result, uh, look at this compared to the reference material. And on a shared test, uh, in both cases uh, the PET CF performed good compared to the reference material. And on the hook test, um, there are basically no big difference between them. Torque or twist test with horizontally and vertically printed test objects. This one is printed in horizontal position. I don't have the annealed version here. Let's see the maximum load. 1.8. And now printed in vertical position and usually it breaks very suddenly. 1.5. And in this case the values are very similar to reference material. I the impact test with this half kilogram hammer. And this is regular PET CF. Zero position. Unit version. At the first look, brittle material, but let's analyze the footage. This is the zero position of the hammer, and this is after breaking the PET CF. And this is after the annealed version, and basically no difference between these two materials in this test. But tower are tougher compared to the PL or PTG but still for technical filament quite brittle material. 3 point bending test where I will place these loads one by one and I'm measuring the deformation after 130 and 60 seconds. This is speed up time lapse video. Load is 1.25 kilograms, now 2.5. 5 kilograms. And even under 10 kilograms it basically don't deform. And there is no permanent deformation, at least nothing visible. On this graph you can see how stiff is this material overall or compared to the reference material. Even under 10 kg, very minimal additional deformation during this one minute. The crypt has a deformation under the constant load. This is the regular PET CF and this is the annealed version. Visually there is no big difference, see, but let's measure them. 13.01 12.58 And now we measure them every day. 
This is the last fifth day and visually the deformation looks very equal, but let's measure them. 13.19 13.02 Let's remove the load. And this permanent deformation, visually it looks completely equal on both test objects. But let's analyze the numbers. First of all, these are very stiff materials, but interesting to see that the PET CF had bigger initial deformation, but that additional deformation was smaller compared to the annealed version. And this we can see better on this graph. But of course, these are very small values, so they both resist very good to the creeping. But maybe this makes me think that I could anneal it a little bit longer. Temperature test in the oven and these two filaments are from this video. This is speed up time lapse video. At the beginning nothing happened and the first deformation I noticed on PET CF at approximately 93 degrees Celsius now and then on annealed on approximately 137 degrees Celsius but it only started with deformation and then it stopped. And you will see I went up to 220 degrees Celsius. This is additional speed up video. I just check how hard or flexible these materials and this annealed version is almost completely hard like before the testing. Maybe it was not annealed enough. All results one more time without any additional comments and here you can see the reference material too. And this one line PET CF and non annealed version will be added to the summary table for my Patreon supporters so they can easily compare this data with any of those which I did in earlier videos and there is also the link always they can check the video where I tested that material because the video contains additional information about the annealing. Now some final thoughts. Yes, pet -CF is still my new favorite filament type and this one is no exception. It is very stiff material, resists good to the creeping, dimensional accurate and for me extremely important, it has good layer adhesion. On the other side, uh, I was expecting a little bit more on temperature resistance. Maybe I didn't anneal it enough, something I have to recheck maybe in that uh, comparison video where I will actually have a 5 PET CF filaments, not 4. And also on the tensile strength I was expecting a little bit better performance from this material. Now if you like this kind of videos don't forget to subscribe and enable that notification bell button too because uh, my videos are usually not recommended by YouTube algorithm and uh, artificial intelligence told me that uh, maybe the reason is that I'm posting too much. <laughs> For example if you watch similar sized channels if they post every two weeks a video it will have the same number of the views like mine in total but I will post I know five or six videos during this period. I'm not sure what is the reason but uh, they are just coming. Anyway, thank you for watching this video and I wish you happy printing.